Hey guys, good morning. It is the day of Big Joe's day, really. <laughs> it is Big Joe's day. Here he is, he's ready to go. So the problem is, is I've got the trailer. I'm ready to get in here, but uh, there's some of these that I really don't trust. And so like this one, the 32 cal, she sees the gate open, she's gone. So I'm gonna actually see if I can go ahead and get them up in the corral, get them away from me and then I'll be able to pull through because when you pull the trailer, it takes a lot longer to get through here, obviously. And, and my gate is on a timer. So uh, when I pull through, it'll, it'll shut. But I, I, I don't want to start off my, my day that bad with a uh, bison running down the road. So I'm going to go get them, try to get them in our main corral and then hold them there. And then I can cut them and work them from there. Morning, buddy. flowers these yearlings they just want to know what's going on and there is some action happening when the big herd is up here they know something's going on why'd you dump the trough come on it's not even hot it's 75 degrees. What are you doing? If you don't, Let's see if the feed sack will get them. If not, it'd be interesting. What's Big Joe doing? Yeah, see, you see me with the feed sack. And they come. Let's see if they'll follow me in here now. Come on, Maya. Yeah, look at them. See, they stopped. Only got one. It's the one I raised. <laughs> Looks like they're coming in here. So I got to get this gate shut. This is the one I left open in my last video. Shoot, 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 shoot. Maya, come on. Let's let her out. She's got a calf. All right. Well, sometimes you got lucky, but problem is I still got to pull through the gate. Big Joe is locked up. He seems calm, which is good. Didn't want to stress him out. He's going to be a little stressed out, but it's okay. Well, got a couple of things done right. We got the trailer in here. Gotta back up and get right there. I know you're not happy with me, buddy, but we gotta get you taken care of. Get you looked at. All right, I've got the trailer backed up and I'm ready to go. I do like this situation so far. Everybody's pretty calm. Try to keep it as low stress as possible. He's not freaking out, which is the number one concern. And most of the time, these older bulls, uh, I've noticed just traveling places and, and uh, going to other people's ranches and stuff, uh, these older bulls don't get too worked up unless you, unless you force them to, like we've had to in the past, to get him over here and get him worked for the first time, get his vaccinations and weighed. So, He's, uh, he definitely wants back over here, but I'm waiting on Tyler to show up and he's going to help me um, kind of make sure I get him loaded up and then uh, we'll be ready to go. So I'll take it that he's, uh, he's calm right now.
What do you think? Got a couple videos, that was cool. <laughs> uh, I hate working him. I hate working him. Eight weeks, I think. It's Elsa. That was cute. <laughs> All right, guys. The big guy is loaded. It took a couple minutes, but uh, once he found the lane, he just continued to run. So, which is a good thing. Uh, sometimes it goes that well. Sometimes it could take a long time, but uh, we try to make it as quick as possible and smooth as possible. But uh, he's actually really calm. <laughs> he's been worked uh, a couple times now. He's chilled out some, which is a good thing. But um. Tyler and I are going to head to Stratford and go to Doc Parsons' place. So follow us along. We'll unload him there and uh, get him tested. built in and it lifts up and it hooks up to uh on using his hydraulic stuff
All right, guys, so we just got uh, Big Joe worked and the results came in, but he, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second, but there is something I wanna talk to you about um, since we're here with uh, Doc Gerald Parsons. One of the things that I've always talked about is how important the NABR is. Doc's had a, a big uh, play in this and he encourages people to do it. And I've talked about it on here several times about why we do it. And so um, there's a lot of benefits to it. And, and Doc knows a lot more about it than I do. But this is, this is where it all starts is right here. It's a good way to get your hair samples when you have the, the bison in the chute and everything. And just need to sort out a small strand of hair and then you just kind of wrap that around your finger give it a yank and then you should be able to see the white hair follicles at the end of the hair and that's what you're wanting is those white hair follicles and you can get those really good at the bottom of the hair uh, bottom of the tail i'm sorry tip of it uh, the north american bison registry was set up uh, to put together all the DNA samples and all the information that we were getting from the DNA uh, in one area so that we can follow trends, patterns, uh, situations. Uh, we've, we've got to do a lot of research on color uh, patterns and finding out some of the situations why there's white uh, bison and it turned out there was a Charlet gene in there. Uh, there is albino bison but one of the most important things in today's time about the DNA testing is uh, it's a permanent record. We're going to record Joe. He'll be recorded in the registry. And then we can follow his pedigree and prove that he is the father through the DNA sampling and who the mother was through the DNA sampling. This way, it makes a non-biased, non disputable un, un, un i mean there's no way you can argue with it because it's actual records and backed up by science that we are not breeding cattle into these bison they are only bison and as close to to a, all bison species as we can get a lot of things has happened in the past in the history they've happened we can't do anything about them we can't change it uh, even bison prehistorically uh, bred back and across sometimes with the prehistoric cattle. So it's kind of an issue all along. But from the time our NABR started, which has been about 40 years ago, that's a long period of time to build a pedigree to show that these are only bison and that the bison industry is one of the main propagators of pre of preserving this species and that it is only bison. So NABR is a great way to have a backup and a paper trail and somebody to stand behind you and give you the proof that you're raising bison, you're selling bison, and it's a bison product. And it being such a, the question about people saying that cattle's in bison, that there's these 100% um, pure bison is, is a touchy subject today and um doc can doc can relate to it more than than we can but um there is cattle genes obviously in some bison just because of the early days the the bottleneck or the right well, there was a bottleneck issue then we had the beefalo issue uh but even before that came along like i said prehistorically the bison originally when they, the species had pretty well separated themselves, occasionally they would go back and get close to a beef herd and there would be some intermingling of genetics. Right. Uh, we see that on DNA testing of prehistoric bison. But that's the past. You know, we, we can't, it's kind of like a Lion King. You know, yeah. we slap him upside the head and, well, that's in the past now. You don't worry about it. Yep. You've you got to go on and be, do your best from that point forward. So when the NBA started the NABR, uh, that was one of the greatest things that association ever did. And that is to secure that you're getting the best, closest product of the only bison that's out there. Yes. And, and a lot of my followers talk to me about the Yellowstone bison. And uh, Doc has actually been up there, worked with the herds um, at Yellowstone National Park. Could you tell us just a little bit about um, the Yellowstone bison and 
maybe their genetics a little bit, Doc, because lots of people are always curious about Yellowstone and, of course, it being one of the great places where the bison roam. Well, the bison of Yellowstone, uh, a good thing about it, that's, a, that's an old, one of our older herds in the, in the national uh, or nation's refuges, and uh, it started with 25 head. And then they added a few bison a long way. Some of those had cattle genes in them uh, that were added. They didn't know at the time there was an issue, but now we're seeing that. But through time, bison will eliminate those cattle genes. I've tested my own herds and seen, and, and when I was chairman of the NABR, I watched a lot of people's herds after two or three generations at certain alleles where the, the cattle genes were, some of those would completely disappear over time. And basically that's a lot of what Yellowstone has done. Over time, uh, they have eliminated most of their cattle genes. I'm sure there's some still on there if you do the complete genome, but you know that, that's not the issue. The great thing about the Yellowstone bison is they were selected and they are awesome bison because if they had a sick or a weak one or a crippled one or a, or a bad genetic issue, guess what? The bear and the, and the wolf took them out because that was easy prey because they were crippled or they were weaker, they weren't as big. So these bear and these wolves have basically selected an awesome set of bison. Uh, and so that's basically what our breeders are doing, the same thing. We get criticized for it, but we're doing the same thing as the bear and the bison. We're trying to produce a good product, a healthy product, and an animal that doesn't have genetic issues. So when I talk about the NABR, and I talk about all the things that we do, and you kind of see a little glimpse of, of what we do, we're bringing Big Joe over here to make sure that um, you know he's not shooting blanks basically and that he is fertile. All these things that we do for bison and what um, a Doc just explained to us, is to keep the genetics of what these bison have today. We can't go in the past, we can't change all of that, but what we do now, we can, we can control what we do now by taking these hair samples and sending them off. Basically, all the efforts that we do uh, and that we try to do is to keep the genetics of what we have today and try to, um, I don't know if the right word is restore, but strengthen it. Strengthen it. And uh, because they did go through a, a tough time in the late 1800s, 1900s, and what we have now, we have to keep a hold of that and make it better. So I encourage uh, the North American Bison Registry. Um, I've got my registration papers back, and I'm going to register all the rest of mine. And I know Doc does it too, so we do encourage that. And if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me uh, first, but Doc obviously knows a whole lot more than I do. You can reach out to uh, Doc, and I'll put the information in the video in my description. So, But I just want to make a quick comment and say thank you to Doc. Um, you see him through my videos, but I, uh, I appreciate you for everything that you do for me, honestly, and, and helping me. I learned so much from, from Doc. And, um, there's a lot of producers out there that can learn from him and that have learned from, from Doc. Because you've been doing it since the early 90s, huh? Uh, 96. 96, yeah. Or 93, I'm sorry, when we got our bison. Yep, first first set there. Um, but anyways, I just want to thank you for, for your help. And I try to pass whatever I learned from him on. And so, uh, But it all starts with, with with things like this. And this is this is where it begins, um, keeping, uh, keeping the genetics in our bison. Hey guys, the results are in, and uh, we're gonna head back home. And I'll tell you what, uh, I'll let you know if Big Joe's shooting blanks. We're gonna head back home.
right, guys. We've made it back to the Ponderosa. Tyler and I did. Had a good visit with Doc Parsons. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Always good to visit with him. He's so smart. But I got to tell you about the big guy here. But uh, we're going to let him right back out here. And then, actually, I've got to do some rotational uh, work with these guys. We'll move them around. I may do that in a little bit. Or maybe on the next video. We're going to let him out right now. Ready? Yeah. It's so funny when they you bring an animal home, they like go to they go to sniffing and they're like, oh, he's back. It's the same guy. They got their little stories they tell each other. <laughs> All the women flocking to him. <laughs> all right, so here it is. Big guy's back here. He's uh, he's doing good. They all all the females came up to him and checked him out, and gave him some love, and it's uh, it's funny how these bison react to uh, when you bring an animal home where it's a new animal. They're like, oh, it's just Big Joe. So, anyways, uh, they're all smelling of him and and all that, checking him out. But enough talking and, and i won't make you wait any longer but uh, doc checked it i actually got to check it too and learn something today but uh big joe is not shooting blanks uh big joe is not sterile big joe is fertile and has lots of swimmers uh, i saw it myself looking through the microscope um after doc did he showed it to me and so i looked it's the first time i've ever done that uh, but uh, he has lots of swimmers, so Big Joe's not sterile. That's uh, that's a good thing, guys. And uh, so that means Big Joe can stay here. Not that he was going to leave. We didn't know what we were going to do with him. Uh, but I told you we weren't going to make any assumptions or anything until we know for sure what's going on with him. So a couple of things that I talked about with Doc was, one, moving him over into some new cows. He made a point and this is all about learning here is something I didn't think about is those cows have to accept them. If those cows don't accept them, he can't do his thing. And, uh, you know, Dunbar, he's been with a lot of those cows. And then when we took Dunbar out to change it up a little bit and put Big Joe in there, um, some of them cows may not have accepted him. And so I think that's probably their, our biggest, our, the biggest reason uh, for only having three babies this year. Uh, we won't know who the father is of those babies until we get their hair pulled this fall and we get it sent off. Guys, what a great experience today being able to go up there and work and actually see that. I know it was kind of difficult to watch. I get it. It was difficult for me to watch him go through that. But we do all this for these awesome animals. And I, I, I know that's those animals, we have to do that to them. And, and uh, there's a reason behind it all, like I mentioned. And um, I'm glad that we were able to take care of Big Joe and find out if um, he was sterile or not. And now we know that answer. And not only were we able to figure that out, we were able to chat with uh, Doc uh, on how important the NABR is, the North American Bison Registry, and how important that is. And um, I, I love working with him. He is great at what he does, and he knows so much about uh, a bison and, and the genetic side, and the fact that he helped get that thing going and, and was on, was a chairman and was part of that. Um, uh, the NABR it is important, and I know I've talked about it, and you'll hear me talk about it more. I appreciate him. I really do appreciate him, and you, you'll see more Doc. And I hope you guys understand a little bit more about the NABR. And that whenever we uh, work our bison this fall, we're gonna pull hair on all of those South Dakota yearlings and all those Canada yearlings. We're gonna pull hair on them and all these Texas cows that we haven't pulled hair on and their babies. We're gonna do all that. And we're gonna bring you along on that as well. And I'm glad that Doc took the time out of his busy schedule to explain to you about the NABR. I have no idea who that is. But anyways, thank you for Tyler for being here. It's always good to have a uh, fellow, never had you in class, but I had yeah. Tyler as a 
football player at Deer Creek. We miss those Friday nights. We don't miss the practice or anything like that. But um, now Tyler is uh, going to Oklahoma State, which is my alma mater, go Pokes. And uh, so Tyler is actually interested in doing this. He's actually interested in raising bison. So he reached out to me uh, like two weeks ago, maybe. Yeah. And uh, we, we picked out a day to do this. And then I texted him a couple days ago. And I said, you may want to show up this day because um, <laughs> we've got something different that I'm not used to doing. Um, and so Tyler was, uh, I'm glad he was able to come and join us to take Big Joe to get uh, semen tested. And um, I mean, for, for somebody that's uh, wanting to raise bison, it's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good start is when yeah. you have to work Big Joe. Uh, yeah, it's not, uh, for me, it's not very exciting. For him, it's probably really exciting. I get, I get uh, pretty, um, pretty stressed out about working um, at Big Joe. So I'm glad Tyler came along for that. But um, hopefully Tyler is interested in raising a bison and wants to learn a little bit more. I'm going to show him around the Ponderosa a little bit and talk about fencing and all those good things, which I've talked to you about several times. And um, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. You guys need to know anything about the NABR, the, the North American Bison Registry, and why it's important to uh, keep what genetics we have of these bison now. It is so important because what we got is what we got, and we just have to strengthen it, just like Doc said. You can always reach out to me, or and I can plug you in with Doc, or um, I can get you a Doc's contact number right here in the description. Um, if you guys need anything, you can always reach out to me there. Thank you guys for watching. Thank Tyler. I want to thank Doc for being a part of all this and, and especially Doc's help. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon. <laughs>